Hello everyone, back on YouTube. My name is Caden Howlett, and today I want to talk about the process of publishing peer-reviewed journal articles and kind of uh, view this through the perspective of a graduate student or someone who's pursuing uh, either a master's degree or a PhD. And the way I kind of want to frame this whole process of peer review is by shamelessly plugging my most recent publication in the journal Tectonics. This is a pretty well, this is a well-respected journal within the geologic community, very specific things that we study, obviously. Um, but I'm very proud of this publication. This was the second half of my master's degree at Montana State University. The title of the paper is Magmatism and Extension in the Anaconda Metamorphic Core Complex of Western Montana and Relation to Regional Tectonics. Bunch of words you don't know, need to understand, um, but this is the final product here in front of me. And I'm gonna to explain to you how this process works and why sometimes it can be very painful, um, but ultimately that it, that it produces valuable science and hopefully original human thought to civilization. So before I get into peer review, I want to kind of view this as a personal example, you know, and I want to talk about how questions in geology are approached and take you through the whole process. Hopefully I can keep this nice and short um, of how you get to this point. And so here I have to shout out my master's advisor, Andrew Laskowski. He oversaw my work at Montana State University. And basically right away when you start a higher degree, you develop a research question. So Drew recognized basically a gap in the literature or um, some geologic question that remained unanswered or where there was not enough data to resolve uh, important geologic questions. For my master's degree, I focused on this certain kind of geologic feature and applied all sorts of complicated, somewhat complicated, uh, radiometric dating techniques that I'll tell you briefly about. Um, but the first thing is to kind of identify an area, identify a question, and target it. I'm a field geologist, so this involves one of the very first steps is figuring out where you want to go in the field that you think will be valuable. And in my case, collecting rock samples and doing geologic mapping. And so I went out into the field and I'll throw some images up to kind of accompany this. I went out into the field with my friend Aislinn Reynolds, who is second author on this paper. Could not have done this without Aislinn, so big shout out to her. This is a big group effort, obviously. Um, but we went out into the field and we spent eight weeks collecting rock samples and doing geologic mapping. And that's the very, very start of this process. Basically, this manuscript that is now published takes you through first a regional geologic setting. I'll throw some images up, like I said. It introduces the reader to the well-constrained and well-known, in most cases, uh, geology, geologic history of the region that you're working in. And then section three here goes into the Anaconda Metamorphic Core Complex, which is the structure we were studying, and talks about previous work that has been done um, on the structure. And I want to emphasize at this point that science, you cannot contribute anything valuable to any scientific question unless you have a thorough knowledge of the work that has been done prior to your arrival. And so I should have mentioned this right away, but a literature review becoming locked in to all of basically, hopefully all of the work that has been done in and surrounding your field area and knowing, having all of the stuff that has been done in the back of your mind as you approach the question of interest. 
And so we describe, you know, the work that has been done in the area and kind of hint towards the questions that we're trying to get at or what you may call gaps in our understanding. The fourth section is the method section, and this is where we describe things like igneous zircon, uranium-led geochronology, uh, geologic mapping, zircon, uranium, thorium, helium, thermochronology, shout out to Aislinn, and get really, you know, into the weeds of the instrumentation that we were using to, without getting into the details, of course, obtain radiometric dates, things like uranium lead ages on individual zircon crystals. After the method section, we go into results. So we, without any interpretations of what the numbers are telling us, we present the results of our geologic mapping. Here on this fifth or sixth page, we have field photographs and have highlighted various structures that are of importance for our interpretations. We go through our results and then we carefully display the basically the numbers that we got from these various techniques that we used. There are some tables in here that describe those numbers as well. And then after you get through the results section, you move into the discussion section. And all of this stuff kind of, once you have your results and you have a firm knowledge of the foundational literature, you are able to attack the questions that you came in to answer. And I'm not going to get into the details because it is quite uh, specific stuff that we're looking at here. So we go into a discussion section and we talk about why we think the various um, kinds of data are important that we produced. And then we propose, at least on this figure here, generalized tectonic models. People obviously have different styles. Some people will focus very specifically on, on small things. Our research group was more interested in, in broader scale regional tectonics, regional geology. And then we go into um, some conclusions and we talk about why, why the work was important and uh, why we think it was important and kind of wrap everything up. And so that's the, that's the final paper. This is about 30 pages, which is, you know, medium length for a, for a journal like this. And this is the final product. So once you have uh, written all of these results up in a way that you think is adequate or hopefully you're proud of, you send your work off to a journal and you'll select a journal. In this case, we chose tectonics. You know, we could have chosen Geosphere or uh, GSA Bulletin or, you know, there are, there are dozens if not hundreds of journals we could have selected from. We sent our work to tectonics and then they, they distribute that work. Editors and associate editors distribute that work to reviewers. And these reviewers are people, uh, in many cases, professors at different institutions, you know, to avoid things like conflict of interest, um, to critically, uh, to critique your work, essentially. And when you get back, at least in my case, since I'm a beginning scientist, this paper came back to me and it was right, right on the border of being rejected, which isn't that uncommon. They'll say, this isn't ready for publication. There are these overarching problems that you need to address and then you can resubmit it. Mine did squeeze through with major revisions and major revisions, uh, they're quite major. You have to really change the way that you present the problem that you're interested in. But in this case, it made the paper substantially better. So, you know, they pointed out gaps in my knowledge where they said, did you read this paper? And in many cases, I hadn't and reading that really helped me rephrase what I was trying to say. The peer review process, it's reviewed, it's sent back to the author, which in this case was the three of us on this paper, and you make those adjustments and then you send it back to the journal. This article went through three rounds of revision. It was basically a ping pong match, you know, back and forth, in improving the quality of the paper every time. Um, 
but that that's basically how peer review works is you are working with fellow scientists to make sure that it's the highest caliber of science that you can get finally after it's reviewed um, you work with a publisher in this case it's Wiley then your article is published and there I've skimmed over a few things um, but I just wanted to share this video to kind of show you how we approach a problem in geology but this is the final article here I'll put a link in the description for you to check this out if you're interested in some dense geologic literature um, but yeah, if you're a graduate student trying to publish a paper, I would say don't be discouraged by critical reviews. If you stay in science, I have a feeling that those keep coming. And so really push through even if your paper is rejected. This thing was right on the edge and it's through now and it's very rewarding to have it done. And hopefully that was helpful, hopefully kind of entertaining. And shout out to Aislinn Reynolds and Drew Laskowski once again for helping me do this. And thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, you know, all the good stuff. Peace out.